Welcome to your camper. This will be your home while you're traveling. This tour will familiarize you with the camper so you know a bit more about it and where to find everything. It may seem like a lot to take in at first, but don't worry, you'll be a pro within a day. Let's take a look. This camper is an easy to drive automatic Mercedes Sprinter. It has a keyless start ignition. The gear shift is on the right hand stalk of the steering wheel and the handbrake is a push button. To engage the handbrake, push the button in. To release the handbrake, pull it out towards you. To start the engine, put your foot on the brake and press the start button. If a message appears on the dash telling you to insert a key, you can do so here. The windscreen wipers and indicator controls are on the left-hand stalk of the steering wheel. To the right of the steering wheel is the headlight control. We don't recommend driving at dusk or night time, so be sure to arrive at your destination before then. Make sure someone is guiding you when reversing and parking. Chances are, this camper is bigger than you're used to driving. There are some handy stickers on the windscreen to remind you of the camper height and maximum speed allowed when driving. Using the infotainment system on the dash, connect your smartphone via Bluetooth to access phone calls and music. The lever to release the bonnet is inside the passenger door on the wall next to the footwell. Under this footwell are the tools to change the tire. The jack is located within the step under the driver's seat. The driver and passenger seats swivel to the back to create the dining area when parked up. In the passenger side door pocket is the first aid kit. We hope you won't need it, but it is there just in case. If you do open it, you have purchased it and can pay for it when you return to the branch. Also in the door is the quick reference guide with some handy tips on operating this camper. Moving outside, here is the power inlet to plug into 240 volt power at a campsite. This is needed to use the microwave and internal power points. Plugging into power will charge the 12 volt house battery. We recommend you do this every two or so days to fully charge the battery. Here is the LPG bottle compartment. Use the key to open the locker. The LPG bottle supplies gas to the interior stove. Make sure the gas bottle is turned off when it's not being used and before driving. We filled the LPG bottle up for you and you'll need to refill it before returning, unless you have purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase gas option. The shut-off valves are in here too. Just in front of the rear wheel is the wastewater outlet. The hose to empty the tank is in the rear of the camper. Also inside the rear doors is the 15 amp power cord, freshwater hose, and other general equipment you may need during your trip. Around on the passenger side of the vehicle is the freshwater tank. The hose to top this up is stored at the rear of the camper. We have filled the tank for you, ready to go. On the sliding door is a functioning window with a fly screen to let the fresh air in. The window is opened and closed from the inside of the camper. Push the clips in, hold and slide the window open or closed. When closing the sliding door, ensure you use some force to close it properly. To open or close the sliding door from the inside, press the lever on the handle in and then slide with some force. The fuel inlet is beside the passenger door. To access it, the passenger door must be open. This camper takes diesel fuel. We filled up the tank for you and you'll need to refill it before returning, unless you have purchased the express return pack or pre-purchase fuel option. Inside the sliding door, you'll see the fire extinguisher on the left. On the right are the house light switches for the front half of the camper. Here you will also have access to the seats for the other two passengers. Seat belts must be worn at all times when driving. This is also where a child seat or booster seat can be fitted. Swivel the driver's cab seats and this becomes the dining area, using the table that is stored behind the passenger seats. At the base of the passenger seats is the 12 volt isolation switch. 
This needs to be on at all times to use the 12 volt appliances including fridge, house lights, water pump and house USB ports. These USB ports are located next to the isolation switch and at the rear of the kitchen bench. Since they are powered by the 12 volt house battery, they will work when you are not plugged into 240 volt mains power. Next to the USB port in the kitchen is the switch for the rear ceiling lights. The kitchen area includes a fridge, gas stove and sink with cold running water. The bench top features an extension to give you a little bit more bench space. The cutlery and utensil drawer is next to the fridge. In the drawers below that are the plates, cups, bowls and coffee mugs, along with other kitchen equipment. Make sure the drawers and cupboards are locked before driving. Opposite is the microwave, pots, pans and electrical appliances. To use these appliances, including the microwave, you must be plugged into 240 volt power. Beneath the sink is the 12 volt control panel. Turn these switches on only when you need them. Leave the fridge switch on at all times. The house battery is separate to the camper engine battery. So, if the house battery is getting low, don't worry, the camper will still be able to start. To the left of the control panel is the 12 volt house battery monitor. You will need to be plugged into 240 volt power to see the battery status. And to the left of that is the water gauge. Use this to check the status of the fresh water and wastewater tanks. The rear of the camper features the sleeping quarters with a double bed bunk at the bottom and another double bunk above that. Access this bed using the ladder provided. The camper features reading lights for your convenience. For your privacy, there are curtains around the sides and rear and privacy screens for the driver's cab windows and windscreen. To finish, we'd like to share some helpful tips for your trip. We recommend you plug into 240 volt power on your first night and then every two or so days for the house battery to fully charge. The speed of the 12 volt battery drainage will depend on the climate and how often it is used. A full charge takes between 14 to 16 hours and needs to be done at a campground. Top up the fresh water and empty the wastewater every one to two days. The wastewater tank must be emptied at an authorised dump station. If you are staying at a holiday park, you will have access to one there. Otherwise, use the THL Road Trip app to search for the closest one. Top up and empty at every opportunity and you won't have to worry about a thing. Lastly, always remember, have your keys with you when you are outside the camper. Access the house through the sliding door. Do not use the internal walkthrough after switching off the engine. Ensure you exit the vehicle, with keys in hand, through the driver's side door and lock the driver's cab, so the vehicle fully switches off. This will avoid a flat battery in the morning. We want to make sure you're completely comfortable before you leave the branch. Please don't be shy in asking your branch host any questions and let them know if anything doesn't seem right with your camper. Once on the road, remember that there's a bunch of helpful videos on the THL Road Trip app. And if stuck, you can call our on-road care team 24-7. On behalf of all the crew at THL, have an incredible adventure.